Now I know what you're thinking. Dave, how could you possibly make a competition out of almost 100 different programming languages? Well, hold on to your keyboards because today we're in for a wild ride. In this episode, we're gonna see which of the languages can claim the title of world's fastest computer language. It'll be a no quarter ass, none given battle royale of the world's best and worst languages. In a race against time, we've pitted these 94 languages against each other in a series of intense head-to-head -head battles. From the tried and true classics like C++ and Java to the cutting edge contenders like Rust and Swift, no language can hide from the heat of competition. Literally hundreds of developers have collaborated on this to meticulously design a coding challenge that will truly test the limits of each language's speed, efficiency, and adaptability. Will it be an old favorite or can an underdog language claim the crown? Are you ready to witness the ultimate battle for programming supremacy? I know I am. So remember to crush that like button and subscribe if you haven't already because you don't want to miss the heart-pounding excitement that's about to unfold. And now, let the games begin. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, we're going to instrument and test almost 100 different programming languages with the same problem in order to determine once and for all which programming language produces the fastest code. We'll compile and test every solution on the same hardware, generate the results, and compare the scores for each of the top languages. And before you think you can guess the winner, it's not assembly language, C, C++, or Rust. Make sure you watch all the way through for the complete rankings and to see the ultimate winner crowned. I think you'll be surprised. And speaking of winners, NVIDIA has graciously provided me with a brand new 16 GB 4080 GPU to be used as a giveaway to one lucky subscriber in the upcoming GPU versus CPU episode. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel in order to be eligible to enter, and I'll give you more details on how to do so coming up later. Now, this whole project began about a year or so ago when I did an episode where I compared the performance of three languages, C, C Sharp, and Python. I wrote a simple but effective prime sieve using the same algorithm in each of the languages to see how they compared for raw performance, then pitted them head to head in that classic death match of prime number generation. Each language would be given five seconds to see how many passes it could complete of solving the primes up to one million. By implementing the same algorithm in multiple languages, we're able to measure just how performant the code generated by each language really is. I put the code for those three solutions up on GitHub and then challenged viewers to contribute solutions in new languages as well as trying to improve my originals. To say it was well received would be an understatement. People went wild with it. Well, at least to the extent that you can go wild with a prime sieve. Pretty soon I was overwhelmed with just managing all of the code and submissions, so I put a call out for volunteers to help manage the project. Three folks from Europe named Rolf, Tudor, and Rutger dove in headfirst and took control, allowing me to get back to making episodes while they managed all the details and the submission review and code process and coding reviews and so on. Pretty soon there were a dozen languages represented, and then two dozen, and it continued to grow. Today there are hundreds of solutions spread across 94 distinct languages, many of which I confess that I didn't even know existed. We have solutions ranging from APL, AUK, and ADA on through REN, YOIX, and ZIG, and everything in between. There are even solutions written in languages that you wouldn't expect at all, such as PowerShell and Minecraft. Yes, somebody actually contributed a solution in Minecraft. We measure each language's performance in sieve passes per second, which is to say the number of times that the language's generated code is able to solve all the primes up to 1 million each second. All languages are tested on a Ryzen 5950 CPU with 32 threads of execution. Rucker and Tudor have built a truly impressive system that manages all of these languages. Each night, an automatic build process compiles every solution, runs it, measures it, and tabulates the performance into an online reporting system that you can browse using the link in the video description. I'm truly indebted to not only Rutger and Tudor for their amazing work, but also to everybody who's contributed new languages or improved solutions in existing languages. And that means that it's finally time to test and compare them all in order to determine which are the top five fastest languages. Now, folks have had at least a year to contribute and optimize the solutions in their favorite languages, and some of the solutions are as impressive as they are interesting. Number five, Java. I hate to admit I was a little surprised to see Java crack the top five. The code looks nice and clean and readable, particularly compared to some of the more esoteric solutions I've seen. I'll show you some representative code from each of the language solutions, but since I can't cover them all in detail in this one episode, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss the deep dives that we'll take into each of the languages to explore how the code works. There should be a little blue arrow down in the corner here, so just click on that to pop up the subscribe box. 
Now, Java is a popular, versatile, and platform-independent programming language that offers unique aspects and benefits to programmers regardless of their experience with other languages, such as Platform Independence Java's write-once-run-anywhere philosophy is enabled by the Java Virtual Machine. You see, Java source code is compiled into bytecode, which can be executed on any platform with a compatible Java Virtual Machine. This ensures portability and reduces the overhead of maintaining platform-specific code. In fact, Java can be found on platforms ranging from parking meters to mainframes. Object-Oriented Programming Java is a fully object-oriented programming language that supports encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. This enables programmers to create modular, reusable, and maintainable code which can lead to better software design and easier collaboration. Robust Standard Library Java has an extensive standard library, which provides a wide range of functionality such as data structures, algorithms, networking, file I.O., and concurrency, and more. This enables developers to focus on their core logic in their applications rather than implementing these many utilities from scratch. Memory Management Java uses automatic memory management with a garbage collector. This eliminates the need for manual memory allocation and deallocation, reducing the risk of memory leaks and making the code, in general, less error-prone. Multithreading Java has built-in language support for multithreading, which allows developers to write concurrent and parallel code efficiently. The language provides high-level abstractions for creating, managing, and synchronizing threads, simplifying the development of complex, concurrent applications. Strong Typing Java is a statically typed language with a strong type system, which can help catch many common errors right at compile time. This reduces the likelihood of runtime errors and encourages better code quality. Security Java's architecture and sandbox model provides a secure environment for running untrusted code. This is particularly beneficial for web applications and applets where security is a critical concern. Java manages to turn in a performance of 1,457 passes per second, securing it a coveted spot in the top five fastest languages. Now, there's one thing I want to address before we get too much further into the raw results, and that's the issue of preconceived notions about people's favorite languages. Let's say you're a Java fan, but you're not satisfied with where Java is ranked. Folks have had a full year to work on these solutions, so most of them are quite well optimized, some incredibly so. You are still welcome to jump in and contribute a faster Java solution if you think you can, but don't assume that just because you've heard that some particular language is the fastest that it's necessarily true. The numbers are what they are, and they represent the best efforts of some dedicated fans of whatever language you happen to be thinking of. Number 4. C++ C++ is my native tongue. It's a high-performance programming language for systems and application programming that offers a variety of unique aspects and benefits for programmers, including high performance. C++ allows for low-level control over system resources and memory, enabling fine-grained optimizations that can lead to high-performance applications. It also supports zero-cost abstractions, which means that high-level language features do not introduce runtime overhead. Object-oriented programming. C++ is an extension of the C language with added support for features like classes, objects, inheritance, and polymorphism. As with Java, this enables developers to write modular, reusable, and maintainable code, leading to better software design. Generic Programming C++ supports generic programming through the use of templates, which allow for the creation of type-safe, reusable code that can be adapted to different data types and use cases. This reduces code duplication and encourages the development of high-quality libraries. Standard Template Library, or STL. The STL is a collection of template-based classes and functions that provide common data structures such as vectors or arrays, lists, maps, and algorithms like sorting and searching. The STL enables developers to utilize these pre-built and well-tested components, improving productivity and reducing the likelihood of bugs. Compatibility with C. C++ is largely compatible with C, enabling seamless integration of existing C code bases and libraries. This makes it easier for programmers to transition from C to C++ and to leverage their existing knowledge and resources. Widespread use C++ has an extensive ecosystem of libraries, frameworks, and tools that can be utilized to accelerate development. The C++ community is large and active, providing ample resources, tutorials, and support for programmers of all skill levels. Portability like C, C++ is highly portable, making it easy to target different platforms and architectures with minimal code changes. This is particularly important for performance-critical applications that need to run on a variety of systems. 
memory management. C++ provides both manual and automatic memory management, giving developers precise control over memory allocation and deallocation. This enables the creation of efficient, low-latency applications. Support for modern language features C++ is continually evolving with recent standards like C++20 including modern language features such as Lambda expressions, smart pointers, type inference, and more. These features make C++ code more expressive, safe, and maintainable. C++ musters a performance of 1,564 passes per second, securing it the fourth spot in our top five fastest languages. The first C++ compiler that I ever used was called Cfront, and it didn't compile to machine code. Instead, your C++ code was compiled into vanilla C code that you then compiled with a C compiler into machine code. Now, if nothing else, it proves there's nothing you can do in C++ that can't be done in C, at least theoretically. Doesn't mean it'll be pretty, however. And that brings us to our number three performer, which is good old regular C. Number three, C. After basic and assembly language, C was the first language I learned way back in the mid 80s. It's a highly influential and widely used systems programming language that has actually been around since the early 1970s. Despite the emergence of newer languages, C remains relevant today for several reasons. Performance. C provides low-level access to memory and system resources, which allows for, as I said with C++, fine-grained optimizations and the efficient use of the hardware. Though not especially relevant to prime civs, it's especially important for performance-critical applications such as operating systems and embedded systems. Portability C is highly portable, making it easy to target different platforms and architectures with minimal code changes. The language has been implemented on virtually every computing platform, and the C standard library provides a consistent interface for interacting with system resources. Compatibility Many programming languages, including C++, Objective-C, and even newer languages like Rust and Swift, are designed to still interoperate with C code. This means that C libraries can be used across a wide range of languages, and that legacy C code can be maintained and integrated into newer projects. Simplicity C actually has a relatively small and simple syntax, making it easy to learn and understand. Sort of. This simplicity can lead to more transparent and maintainable code, especially when working with low-level systems programming. Ubiquitous tooling. Due to its long history and widespread use, C benefits from an extensive ecosystem of compilers, debuggers, profilers, and other development tools that have been refined over decades. Operating systems and embedded systems. C remains the primary language for many operating systems such as Linux and Windows, as well as for embedded systems. This is due to its performance, portability, and low-level capabilities, which make it well-suited for resource-constrained environments and bare-metal programming. Education C is still widely taught in computer science and engineering programs, as it provides a solid foundation for understanding low-level programming concepts and the underlying hardware. Learning C can help developers gain a deeper understanding of memory management, pointers, and system architecture. The C solution bests the C++ solution by only about 3%, but it's just enough for it to eke out a lead and land on our leaderboard in the number 3 position with 1,600 passes per second. Before we move on to the top 2, here's a spoiler alert. Assembly language did not make the top 5. For at least a year, people have been complaining that it's just axiomatic that assembly must be the fastest because, after all, it's the closest to the machine. And by definition, anything you can do in any other language, theoretically, can be done in assembly as well. But there are three major factors that contribute to how fast a particular solution is going to be. First, there's the algorithm itself. Every solution that's considered for the competition must be faithful to my original algorithm. You can check the GitHub for the official rules, but in general, it means they must use a sieve of Aristosthenes, they cannot include any pre-baked information about prime numbers other than two, and they may only use a single bit to represent a sieve element, which avoids people wastefully using bytes or even complete words to represent a number in the sieve. It also forces the language to do some bitwise math to access a sieve element, which exercises both the language and the compiler. Second, there's the compiler itself. Not all compilers are created equal, and some, like C and C++, have been optimized over the course of decades to produce the most efficient code possible. That's going to be truer for some languages than others. And third, and this is the big one for assembly language, is the ability of a human programmer to express the algorithm efficiently in that language, and that's where assembly language lags. While it's true that anything you can do in C or Rust can also, by definition, be done in assembly language, it doesn't follow that there's always a programmer who can manage the complexity and nuances of the fastest algorithms while working in assembly language. 
We certainly do have some assembly language versions, but they're not amongst the top five. The same folks who loudly pounded the table a year ago maintaining that assembly must be the fastest were unable to generate a solution in assembly that overtook the top programming languages. So like I said, it's theoretically possible, but until a human is able to write the code that does it, or even chat GPT, it just doesn't count. And rest assured, we've had some very talented programmers work towards it. Like always, if you don't like the results, your only recourse is to code it up, write a faster one, and submit it to GitHub. And with that, we can pick up where we left off with our runner-up. Number two, Rust. Rust is a systems programming language that aims to provide memory safety, concurrency, and performance. While C has long been the popular language for low-level programming, Rust has been designed to address some of the shortcomings of C, offering unique features and benefits that could be valuable to a programmer who already knows C, such as memory safety. Rust enforces strict safety guarantees at compile time through a strong ownership model, which prevents common issues like null pointer dereferences, buffer overflows, and using after free. This makes Rust code less prone to memory-related errors and vulnerabilities when compared to C. As Dave Cutler once said, first you allocate, then you free, and don't pee in the pool along the way. Concurrency. Rust has built-in concurrency support through its ownership system, which ensures data races are caught at compile time. Rust's lightweight threading model and safe concurrency primitives make it easier to write concurrent code that is both performant and safe. Modern language features. Rust incorporates many modern language features that C does not, such as pattern matching, type inference, and an expressive type system. These features make Rust code more concise, expressive, and easier to maintain. Air handling. Rust has a robust air handling system using the results and option types. This allows developers to handle errors more explicitly and to avoid the pitfalls of using error codes or exceptions, as is common in C. Package management. Rust comes with Cargo, a package manager and build tool that simplifies dependency management and build configuration. This makes it easier to manage and share code between projects, something that is typically more challenging in C. Interoperability. Rust has excellent C interoperability, making it easy to gradually migrate existing C code bases to Rust or to leverage Rust libraries in C projects. This allows programmers to use Rust's advantages in safety and performance while still working with existing C code. Active community and ecosystem. Rust has a rapidly growing ecosystem and an active, supportive community, which makes it easier to find libraries, tools, and learning resources. Performance. Rust is designed with performance in mind, and its zero-cost abstractions mean that high-level constructs don't impose runtime overhead. As a result, Rust programs can achieve performance comparable to or better than equivalent C code. This turns out to be true in this case as well, as the Rust solution tops both the C and C++ solutions to land at the number two spot on our leaderboard with 5,857 passes per second. And that brings us to our number one. I've already said it wasn't assembly language, and we know it's not C, C++, or Rust, so what's left? Well, hang on to your hats, because the winner crushed the rest of the competition. And that winner is... Number one, Zig. Zig is a systems programming language that aims to provide simplicity, performance, and robustness. Some of its unique features and benefits are... Readability. Zig focuses on simplicity and readability, making the code easier to understand and maintain. It avoids some of the complexities and pitfalls associated with C, such as the preprocessor, header files, and macro expansion. Memory safety. Zig offers optional runtime safety checks, including bounce checking, integer overflow checking, and uninitialized memory checking. This can help catch bugs early in development, which can be particularly useful for memory-related issues. Air handling. Zig uses air unions and air sets to make air handling explicit, robust, and predictable. Unlike C, where air handling can be inconsistent and error-prone, Zig encourages a more disciplined approach to handling errors. Compile Time Code Execution Zig supports compile time function execution, which allows developers to execute code at compile time, generating optimized code based on input parameters. This enables powerful metaprogramming capabilities and can lead to more efficient and flexible code. Package Management and Build System Zig comes with its own integrated package manager and build system, making it easier to manage dependencies, compile, and link projects without relying on external tools. This simplifies the development process compared to C significantly. Interoperability 
Zig also has excellent C interoperability, allowing developers to easily integrate Zig code with existing C code bases or leverage C libraries in Zig projects. This makes it possible to gradually migrate C code to Zig or to use Zig to improve specific parts of a C project. Deterministic behavior. Zig aims to reduce undefined and implementation-defined behavior, making the language more predictable and consistent across different platforms and compilers. This can lead to more portable and reliable code. Performance. Zig is designed with performance in mind, offering manual memory management and fine-grained control over system resources. This enables Zig programs to achieve performance comparable to or better than equivalent C code. Zig turned in the highest number, almost doubling the performance of Rust with a winning score of 10,205 passes per second. That places it at the top of our leaderboard. But wait, 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 there's more. One next step was to go beyond programming languages and focus on the hardware aspect for a moment. So I decided it was time to learn some CUDA programming, and thanks to a combination of Rutgers help and a little input from ChatGPT, we were able to come up with a solution that employs the 4080 GPU working in concert with the CPU. That's coming up in a future episode that will be titled GPU versus CPU. So again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it or the detailed language deep dives where I'll take you on a tour of each language. I'll also be announcing the winner of the 4080 GPU giveaway in that episode. All you need to do to enter is to leave a hopefully useful and compelling comment on this episode with your thoughts on the results or maybe a prediction of how you think the GPU will fare relative to the CPU solutions. I'll pick a random entry from amongst the subscribed commenters and announce the winner in the GPU versus CPU episode. And remember, unless and until you hear that you've won in the actual episode, anybody claiming to be me and reaching out to you online in the comments is almost certainly a scam. I'll put a link up to the original C, C Sharp, and Python video, so click on that to watch the original. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I'll see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.